Hello again, everyone. Um, so just to re reintroduce myself, my name is Dr. Brian Davis. I'm a clinical health psychologist here at the Norton Neuroscience Institute. Uh, we're on installment two of the Mental Health Hol Holiday Series. Uh, yesterday we talked about stress. Today we're going to talk about depression and anxiety. And just to give you a schedule for the rest of, of, of the week, tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, communication. Thursday we're going to talk about sleep. And then Friday we're going to talk about mindfulness. So we'll kind of build in um, throughout the uh, week and end on Friday. So um, today we're going to talk about depression and anxiety. So two things that I want to emphasize at the very beginning here are um, highly normal things. So when we talk about mental health symptoms, I know there's a lot of stigma that comes around mental health, but uh, in reality, mental health is um, you know in, in the in the same position as physical health. It's a it's a human experience. Um, just as we have physical pain, we can have mental pain. Um, therefore, to talk about it, um, we want to have an open discussion, and um, that's how we are here at the uh, neuroscience. In Institute is, is, is very open. We kind of normalize a lot of these symptoms um, and, and we want um, everyone to know in terms of the uh, patient population that, that we're open and we're transparent and, and, and we hope to talk further about some of these symptoms. So to start um, with uh, d depression, again, very normal experience. So when we talk about things like even a, a depressive disorder, one has to have a lot of symptoms going on um, in a set period of time. And and sometimes that happens and sometimes it, it, it does not. One does not have to have a diagnosis to feel depressive symptoms. Um, and these symptoms are highly, highly normal. And even being diagnosed with a depressive disorder is also highly normal. To put it into perspective, one in every 10, per, every, one in every 10 people has a diagnosis of a depressive disorder. Um, we're gonna talk further about anxiety here in a minute too. Um, two in every 10 people have, have, an, have an anxiety disorder or meet criteria for one. So everything we're talking about is, is high, highly normal and, 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 are, and are things that, that, that we've either experienced um, in our lives at some point or are currently experiencing. Some of those symptoms around depression may be things like lack of energy, uh, feelings of guilt, feelings of sadness, um, changes in sleep, changes in appetite. Um, not having interest in things that we used to have interest in, we call that anhedonia. Um, maybe some suicidal ideation. Um, these are all common symptoms. They all don't necessarily, again, have to happen all, all together. We might, be, we might be feeling some of these symptoms in, in, in isolation. Um, but a lot of times while we're talking about this around the holidays is, you know, quite often we see higher mood symptoms or depression symptoms around times of stress. So we talked about stress yesterday, so to kind of tie that in, um, when stress is up, mood symptoms are usually up too. So, so these things tend to happen in, uh, in, in conjunction. So to kind of bridge the gap over to, to um, anxiety. So anxiety, again, is something that often happens in conjunction with mood symptoms while we're talking about depression and anxiety is because, well, they often show up together. One's maybe more primary, one is more secondary, or vice versa, but they commonly are seen in, in conjunction. Um, so things that see with, with anxiety, these feelings of feeling uh, tense, feeling keyed up, uh, your mind racing, they call that rumination, um, you know, difficulty sleeping, uh, maybe, having a, maybe having a panic attack, um, just high levels of, of anxiety, again, often seen when we have high levels of stress. So, here around the holidays, um, we're kind of building in and why we kind of talked about stress first is because you know stress is kind of the foundation to, to a lot of uh, these other factors. Um, but again, just to kind of um, contextualize anxiety, just like we did with stress, anxiety is a very normal human process. So um, your body is actually supposed to be good at getting anxious. Um, that's why we've been able to survive all of these years and, and why when we were, you know, millions of years ago when we were cave people, how we survived with wild animals, with natural disasters and all of these things. If we couldn't get anxious or, um, or kind of ruminate about something scary happening, we wouldn't be able to keep ourselves safe, okay? So, so when we talk about anxiety, when we, when we can contextualize and recognize, it's actually a normal process and it's actually very useful. So for example, if this room just caught on fire and I needed to, to leave, what would happen? Well, just like we talked about yesterday with the fight or flight response, I would get very revved up. My body would do all these, these physiological changes. I would get very anxious, but all those things would help me 
get to safety. So when we think about it in that way, anxiety isn't necessarily our enemy, but when we have it around, it's more chronic, it's more consistent and happening in times when we aren't in, um, in a level of threat or it's getting in the way of us maybe going to work or, or, um, or us just, just having um, successful functioning throughout the day. This is where it becomes, um, you know, it becomes troublesome. So it becomes what I like to say unworkable. So when I talk about things like depression, things like anxiety, very normal processes, but we want to make them um, workable and not unworkable. So what can we do with that? Well, when it comes to anxiety and depression, we have a lot of similar coping mechanisms. So, so a lot of them is, um, you know, could kind of center on depression for, for a moment. Things like your, your activity levels, the more that you're up and moving, when you're up and moving, um, you know you're, you're you're able to kind of get get out of a get out of a low or kind of get out of a funk. Um, what happens is neurotransmitters change in your brain when when you exercise, when you actually get outside and have natural sunlight, vitamin D. Um, you're really working with yourself there to change your mood in a positive way, in a natural way. Also, leaning on social support. So those that are around you that you can talk with, express yourself. One of the you know big contributor to things like depression and things like anxiety is suppression of what you're actually feeling. So the more that we hold it in and press it down and press it down, it just builds up in, into an experience where where we're kind of overflowing with 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 negative thoughts and negative feelings. So the more you can talk and find that support system, it doesn't necessarily have to be this um, this huge uh, you know amount of people. This can be a friend, two friends, a, you know a few family members. Um, so keeping even a tight knit. Um, closed social support is is sufficient. Um, another thing is to um, utilize your, your providers as well as your resources. So when I say providers, I mean someone such as myself. So with me being within the neuro, the neurological institute, um, I'm a resource. Whether it's seeing me personally or for me to allow you um, to see someone out in the community via resources that I have. So even if you can't necessarily get in to see a provider. Um, we all have resources to then steer you in the direction that's gonna be most helpful. So even you reaching out, you're going to get an answer into someone that you can talk to and someone that, that can really help. Um, I think that's really helpful and really important. Um, another is to adhere to medications that you are on. So if you are taking a, a, a depressive medication, if you're taking a, a, a medication for anxiety, I mean, these are things that we wanna keep, keep doing and if they're helpful, they're working, a lot of times when things are good, we think we need to stop taking the medication because things are working, things are better. Um, but how these medications work, especially for depression, is you need to keep taking these even when you're feeling good. That means it's working. That means um, the balance in terms of physiology and neurotransmitters, everything's in line, everything's helping. Um, and we want to continue to take. So it's not treated almost like how we take an ibuprofen or an Advil. When you know, we take it, we have a headache, headache goes away, we don't keep taking it. That's not how antidepressant medications work. So having that piece of um, wisdom is usually very helpful. When it comes to um, anxiety specifically, again, the activity levels. So getting out, if you're feeling pent up, you're feeling anxious, you know, things like exercise, a walk, getting outside, similar to what we talked about with depression can be very helpful. Also, sometimes we need to get outside and move. Other times we need to relax. So when we talk about relaxation techniques, if that seems more, um, more um, helpful, what we can do is utilize some of the techniques that we talked about yesterday, the deep breathing techniques, using your diaphragm, in through your nose, out through your mouth, changing yourself, you know, really changing your um, physiological processes can really help your body calm down, which helps your thoughts calm down and everything kind of come to a place that's more helpful. Um, so we can do relaxation techniques. Maybe this is something like yoga, or this is something like deep breathing, or this is reading a book, or it's something you can be presently focused in something like coloring, something like knitting or sewing or, or playing a video game, something. There's a whole host of things that can really help there and, and, and that's gonna look different for each person, um, but just something to keep in mind. Another part too is um, with our thoughts is what we call is reframing our thinking. This doesn't mean challenging your thoughts or saying, hey, stop having negative thoughts, they're bad or they anything like that. I think when we have thoughts that are depressive or thoughts that are anxious, it's normal thoughts. They're, they're part of the everyday human experience and we're gonna have them. What I like to do is have more flexible thinking. So, so I, I use this analogy of if this room was dark and I came in here with just a flashlight, 
I could only look at one thing at a time. So if I looked in this room with my flashlight and only saw a computer, I would say, oh, this is a computer lab. Um, but really that's just one narrow lens that I have of what this whole room is. If I turned on the actual light to the room, I'd see, no, there's a table, there's chairs, there's computers, there's a refrigerator. This is a whole host of things in this room. It's more than just a computer. So what I mean by that is that's kind of a metaphor I like to use for our thinking. When we get um, kind of stuck on, on more narrow, rigid uh, views that are more negative and more unhelpful, those aren't necessarily wrong or bad, but those are just one, one way. And, and when we can kind of expand out and, and, and see some of the other positive um, thoughts that we have or positive experiences, um, kind of contextualizing our thought process, I think these are things that are really helpful. The more we can allow ourselves to do that and get more flexible in our thinking, that can be, that can be really helpful and allow us to reframe where we are in terms of anxiety or in terms of uh, depressive symptoms. Um, and, and again, I can't emphasize enough, the more that we can talk and rely on social support, um, this is why we're kind of doing these things right now, it's just the, the accessibility, the openness, the validation that one gets in talking about these things. This is why this is really important. Um, and I hope that we're kind of modeling that, hey, we can talk about mental health symptoms, we can talk about depression, anxiety, stress, sleep, whatever it is, it's okay, it's normal. Um, and I hope that we can continue to, to have these conversations beyond just this, just this live feed, but also with, with those close to us and, 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 and our, and our um, support system. So um, I hope that that, that that was helpful in terms of clarifying depressive symptoms, what they are, what we can do with them, um, anxiety, what it is, contextualizing it, normalizing it, and then things that we can do with it. Um, and I think with talking about stress and talking about now mood and anxiety symptoms, I think We've, we've, we've understood them a little bit more, we kind of know what we can do with them, and they could really help us here as we enter the holiday season. So thanks again for joining me today. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, and I look forward to meeting you then. Thanks.